Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Volcker Report special documentary entitled There Is No Collapse. This is our fifth installment in the series. For those of you that are just tuning in, you probably want to definitely start from the beginning of the playlist, starting with the intro and working your way through it. Uh, there is a lot of information that uh, I go over in this series and today we're going to focus on the Shemitah hoax exposed cryptocurrency and Deutsche Bank market rigging. I want to start this off talking about fear porn. Okay. Now this is not taken away from anyone who has done their due diligence and, and done a lot of research and they're putting out good intel not regurgitated information but new information that people can uh, not only profit from um, but also benefit from as well um, now being that uh, I'm, I'm dealing with the Shemitah specifically it's because first of all if you're not familiar with uh, Rabbi Khan, whatever his name is, he did a um, he did a book and uh, talking about the Harbinger. It's a very good book. Uh, he really broke down some of the spiritual aspects of 9/11. It was right on point. It was awesome. So this is not to take away anything from him. He's a, he's an excellent uh, researcher, and I have nothing but the utmost respect for him. So I'm not I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about people who have used his information, especially focusing on the Shemitah, and have built um, concepts around it as for fear porn to, to push products and, and push their books and their wares and things like that. First of all, let me just say this. If you knew something that was impending in, in, in and in devastation, like this picture you're looking at, think about if you were this guy. Here's this astronaut. What's your first thoughts? You're on the moon, you're doing scientific research. And while you're on the moon, you look back at Earth and you see this happen. You see this asteroid come right through the planet and just total destruction. What what are your first thoughts? You see this total destruction there. But you couldn't warn the people. You saw it coming. But what could you do? It happened so fast. What could you do? You could do nothing. So in this in this situation, first of all, this guy uh, is innocent. He's he's doomed. He won't be able to get back home. There's no home to get to. So he's gonna die here on this on this rock. That's number one. But number two, let's just say for sake of argument, he saw this, and let's say all of the technology they have here on on earth could not pick this thing up coming right but only he did let's say he saw it and for whatever reason they can't see it and let's say that for whatever reason when he saw it let's say it was uh you know some distance out regardless of what that distance was or that time was let's just say that there was that had he warned them of this impending doom there was something they could have done to prevent it let's say for sake of argument uh, on earth they have special instruments that when they see something like this coming they could shoot something at it and break it up or disintegrate it let's just say that technology existed just for sake of argument let's just say that this was preventable all right and this guy is the only one that sees it because of his vantage point on the moon let's say he did see this and let's say he could have warned them but let's say he didn't warn them. Well, guess what? This event would be on his head. Right? All this billions of people, their blood is on his hands because he could have warned them and he didn't. But now let's let's switch gears a minute. Let's say for argument's sake that he did warn them. And he said, "You know what?" <clears throat> This here's the evidence I have to suggest that this is coming and this is what's going to happen. Uh, and all the while, no, they can't pick this up for whatever reason. Earth's instruments can't pick this up, but they do have the technology to stop it if they 
if he could give them information and whatever. Let's just say for sake of argument, that is that's still the facts, that's still the case. But then he says, he, he comes out and, and he does a series of, of, um, of, of speaking from where he's at. And let's say they have the technology where you can hear him clearly, just as you can clearly hear me. And he does basically a presentation on, on, on this coming pending doom. And all they have to do is listen to him. And he has these 10 steps uh, uh, that they can take to survive this. And he says, you can have my book. Get my latest book on this subject for 1995. But for sake of this example, let's say he says you can get you can buy my book for nineteen billion dollars. Okay? Nineteen ninety five. Nineteen billion uh dollars and ninety five cents. You can get you can get my book, get my latest, so you can protect yourself and your family. Well that's what fear porn is. Okay? Fear porn is having information and then using it to get rich. Or taking information that's regurgitated that may not necessarily be true, but it's enough to fear someone into action. And that's what this picture does. It fear it would fear someone into action. That's what fear porn is. And that's what you need to understand and get away from. Now, facts are one thing, but when you come with this kind of garbage, it really messes with folk. Okay? Now, the people who've been using the whole Shemitah thing Every time they're wrong, what do they do? They push the date back and say, well, you know, we miscalculated. It's a year out. So let's give a little bit of history on this. Back in 1992, there was um, there was a recession and there were fears that, uh, you know, that, that we were in financial in dire financial straits and that they they didn't think we were going to make it to see 1994. All right. 1994 was supposed to be the end of the financial world as we knew it. 1994 has come and gone okay now you got people even hedging their bets and going out to 2017 because that's a year out and they give themselves a whole nother year now to sell their wares okay and that's what they're doing they said that uh, this year uh, last year was supposed to be a big thing didn't happen then it said uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed it or not but uh, May the 28th Okay, was supposed to be the end of the world too, which is tomorrow. And some people even say that, that, that last night, that when you woke up this morning, the dollar was supposed to be dead. That's what they said. The dollar hit a new high for the week. So what happened? Oh, they're gonna push it out and say, oh, it's next week or they always go further out, and it gives them more time to sell more books and tapes and things of that nature. Okay, so that's what's going on with the whole the whole fear thing. Okay. Now, you need to get away from that, all right? So let's let's move on to what's happening. All right, the next thing that they want to scare you with right now is war, okay? All right? And basically, they're saying that war is peace. They're scaring you with dropping bombs and nukes falling out of the sky. All right? That's the next thing they're scaring you with. I'm here to tell you, no, that's also not going to happen. The reason why it's not going to happen is because of this. All right? Hedge funds are in trouble. All right? This is a electronic cryptocurrency type of environment we're dealing with. Uh, it has now come to light that Deutsche Bank has not only been rigging the gold and silver markets, but also equity markets around the world. And thus... Hedge funds and other wealth funds are struggling. They're struggling because of the new cryptocurrency aspect of the markets. The whole cryptocurrency thing was rolled out to prepare everyone, especially the retail community, to get used to the idea of the whole crypto electronic world that has been rolled out. They've been working on this for several years. The stock market had, it was the first place that it started. So now, as you can see here, Mr. Tony James, Blackstone Group president, is quoted as saying, it's kind of a day of reckoning that we face here. There will be shrinkage in the industry, and it will be painful. Hedge funds are just getting crushed. And they're saying here that they may lose 25% of their assets. And I'm here to tell you it's a lot more than that. Many funds have been closing their doors and giving their, giving their clients all their money back. Why are they doing this? These are some of the smartest guys in the world, right? The best traders in the world, right? It's because they know 
what has happened. They realize that some some of these funds has even been noted that they're down as much as 98% of losses because they can no longer compete the way they used to. They used to be able to trade in certain aspects in certain ways and take advantage of certain laws and rules and regulations that have all changed. We have new rules and regulations and we also have a new system in place and they can't use the old ways of an old styles of investing in the new system. That's where the problem is. They, because technically speaking, they really weren't traders. They were investors. But the new environment is hostile to investors. The new environment is, is hostile to savers. Okay, and so what is the what, what is what is the the prospects here? Well, first of all, they're trying to take paper money out of the system. They want everything to go to the new electronic control grid. Even Europe is removing paper currency from circulation when they recently announced removing the 500 euro note. Okay. So, in essence, Bitcoin is just another example of a computerized system of market order and routing with built-in regulation. All right, and that's why they roll Bitcoin out to the public so you could get used to it. You think, oh, since the dollar's dying, this will get us. The, you know, we, we can use this, and the government can't regulate it. No, the government created it, thus the government regulates it. It's all part of this system. All right, and you're going to see that. Now, I want to pause. I should have did this in the beginning. But I want to pause and I want to dedicate this to the late, great Charlie McGrath of Wide Awake News and Wide Awake Radio. He was a, a, a dear friend and a brilliant man. And we all owe him a great debt because he is one of the first pioneers to come with the truth and do so in a striking and a hardcore fashion he did not mince words or bite his tongue he gave you the real and he gave people like myself a platform to also speak truth so Charlie this entire um, presentation I dedicate to you Charlie McGrath so uh, we miss you very much and just want to take time out to let everybody know that uh, this series is definitely um, in his honor. In our previous vid, we showed you um, how to tell when the computers are um, are in in the market, pushing it around versus people. We're not going to go back into that, but I just want to 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 remind you of that because these next slides we're going to get into. All right, so here we have it. Deutsche Bank will be hiring. Uh, for these doomed jobs, the most talented people in the market work here. What are they talking about? Well, let's get into it and see. The bottom line is this. Deutsche Bank is firing everybody and replacing everybody with robots or algorithms. All right, Algorithms are going to be controlling everything, computer programs. You don't need people anymore, not even for back office functions. Computers are going to be doing everything. Okay? That's the warning sign right there. Now, notice how this is being rolled out right after we heard about the fraud. You don't really see them uh, really going in on the fraud stuff. They're going in on the computer stuff. All right, that was just a smoke screen to let you know what they're doing. They don't care about the fraud stuff you that coming out. They care about you knowing about this, the, mach the rise of the machines. All right, we have been given incremental exposure to the new electronic system of global digitization and that's what this is about all right part of today's system of fractional reserve banking and fiat de facto uh, instrument of debt currencies are run by the central banks all are regulated through the international monetary fund and institution created by the united nations to principally enslave nations to debt and to control them through debt all right, you need to understand that. That's what this is about. This new control system is very difficult for people who don't understand it to operate in it. So they've been rolling it out incrementally uh, in, in stages. You know, the Bitcoin was just another stage in the evolution of this. Taking money out of the system, charging you now to hold a bank account, charging you if you want to uh, translate the digital credits into paper cash at an ATM machine. All right. Um, 
SunTrust Bank is going to start charging people now. If you don't have an account there, and someone writes you a check from that from the, that account, they're going to charge you uh, seven dollars now. If the check is for uh, if the check check is over fifty bucks, anything under fifty bucks you won't get charged. But anything over that, they're going to charge you seven dollars now to convert that paper check into paper money. There is a fee now to do that because they're taking money out of the system. Uh, for several years now, uh, banks have been removing cash out of their branches. Uh, as you know, bank robberies were something that you know were you know rampant, and so one of the ideas they had was to basically take the cash out of the bank, and it all made sense because they were already working on rolling out the electronic control grid anyway. So once they got it underway, they said we don't even really need to hold cash anymore. We don't have to worry about bank robberies. So now they hold very little cash in a bank. Some banks have less than $12,000 in it. I'm not kidding. So you need to, that's why you see the armored cars all the time. They're coming and picking up uh, the cash and sending it to the Federal Reserve. That's what they do on a daily basis. All right, we're, going, we're already uh, in, in a pseudo cash or society already. Okay, and how is, how is this possible and why is this possible? It's possible because they want to control every aspect of what's going on. That's why the U.S. mimics Rome, because Rome never went away. It still exists. They've set up central banks in every location, uh, in every major uh, continent, and that central bank controls the action in, on that continent. So that it's one big circle, one big system controlling everything. And they want to enslave the countries to that central bank. And once that uh, electronic part of the system branches out to that section of the continent, then nothing can move or shake in that continent without going through that central bank. So that central bank controls and regulates everything through debt. That's what we do. So the United States goes over there. They say, okay, you know, we'll trade you this for your oil or whatever precious minerals or whatever resources you have, and then that's what we do. So basically, in a nutshell, what are we? Well, first of all, we are not a democracy like people have been led to believe. We are a constitutional republic, all right, with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. So then you may ask, what is our foreign policy? Our foreign policy is democracy. Democracy means mob rule. We have a mob of bullets and guns and bombs, therefore we make the rules. It's just that simple. So we have a powerful media whose job is propaganda. The media is not, uh, their job is not to report news. It's to design and make up and create news to further push the agenda of the central banking system the electronic control grid it's all propaganda and it starts in the public schools from grade one uh, that's why the educational system in America is the worst in the world because it's no longer an educational system it's a propaganda system all right meant to uh, enslave you mentally first get you committed to our country thinking that our government is godly and that our military is godly and that all of our causes are godly and we do no wrong meanwhile we're over there bombing babies and women and children and bombing hospitals saying we're we're giving them freedom and democracy because they're in a, in a dictatorship well first of all if no one called you and asked you to come over there and do something why are you doing it it's because they're rolling out the control grid they're forcing it on the people all right and how do they do that here how do they convince us here it's through bread and circus remember Rome is alive and well as Rome expanded um, it was by and large a very good place to live for its day it's like America right the Roman Republic had developed a system of representative democracy very similar to our own the laws were precise and fixed judgments um, you know they were not arbitrary nor capricious and the Roman citizens had extreme privileges and rights in this system like we do today one of them was bread and circuses poor Romans of the common class who could not feed themselves were guaranteed free bread by the state all right that's like we have here 
All right, and then they were given, you know, whack entertainments from theater and plays to music to gladiatorial combat and other forms of sports. We have that here too, right? We have mixed martial arts and boxing and football and all these other things to keep you in that mindset of not understanding what's going on in the big picture. All right, uh, it was a costly system, but it was a system that served Rome's. Um, senatorial and political class citizens very well because it keeps everyone else docile uh, power and position meant opportunity for more wealth in the Roman Republic much like it does in our Republic citizens votes were highly sought after and many uh, patrons were all too happy to buy them just like we have here all right, uh, the merger of, of corporations and government is fascism, and that's what we have here. Uh, Rome citizens enjoyed the highest standard of living in the world, America. Fresh running water, free baths to stay clean and sanitary, medicine and sciences and technologies unrivaled anywhere else, USA. Yet it came at a price. It came at a price. And we're going to do part two, and we're going to pick up and find out what that price was. So stay tuned for part two.